Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling. Really appreciate you guys making some time out of your day to watch the video. In today's video, is we're going to answer a subscriber request. We're going to talk about how to correctly spool your bait cast reels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys three different ways to spool them up, depending upon what you need to be doing with your bait cast reels. I think it's going to be some pretty interesting information. And real quick, if you guys are interested in any bait casting reels or any tackle at all, I'll include the bait works link in the description. It's a great way to support the channel. It's one of the greatest tackle shops online or in, in store in person in the entire United States. You can get your block at old school jigs exclusively there. Much appreciated you guys uh, using the links in the description to, to support the channel here. Okay guys, let's talk a little bit about this bait cast reel deal. Now, um, bait cast reels, the way that you spool them has a lot to do with the performance. It has a lot to do with um, how far you can cast. It has a lot to do with uh, how easily you get backlashes or not. And there's some simple tips I'm gonna show you guys that will really help out here. So I'm gonna show you three different setups here. The first thing that I do with mine guys is when I'm spooling a bait caster, I spool all, I take all the line off of it and then I'll take braided line, like maybe some 50 pound test braided line and I'll spool, you can see, not quite half the spool with braided line there. It's really important though, when you use braided line guys, there, the, the little, there's a, on, the, on the spool, the spindle of the spool, there's a little hole in there, and it's really important that you put the, the braided line inside of that hole and tie a knot, because if you just try to tie a knot around the spindle itself, the braided line will slip here, and you, you, you'll just, you can just peel it off with your hand, so make sure you tie your knot to the little hole that's on the spindle there and fill it about a halfway full. Now there's a couple different reasons that I do this. Number one is by putting braided lines backing on, um, it saves you some fluorocarbon. And secondly, I think it you get less backlashes with it. There's something about having this backing on here that you get less backlashes. So that's the first step that I do. Now the next step, I'm gonna show you guys how I spool it if I'm doing a lot of skipping, like skipping and pit, skipping underneath docks, that type of stuff. This is one of the hardest things to do with a bait caster. Skipping is really easy with a spinning rod and I prefer to do it with a spinning rod because you can, it's just so much easier and you can get the baits farther back in there. But if you skip with a bait caster, it can be really frustrating getting bird's nests and fluffs on your line, unless you've got some of those $600 high dollar Shimano's or whatever it is that don't backlash. But if you're like everybody else, you've got regular bait casters and they backlash. So if you skip a lot, here's a real big tip that I'll give you a skipping, is when you fill your fluorocarbon up, make sure that you see the gap there, make sure you leave about a quarter of an inch gap between the outside of the spool and the line there. What that does is with your fluorocarbon, with your braided backing and less line on there, that will reduce your ability to, or that will reduce the amount of backlashes you get in half. There's something about not filling that spool all the way full that will allow you to control that, that uh, the, the, uh, the free spool on there a lot better and you'll be able to really skip those baits good there. But for normal situations, guys, this is the way I do it. I fill my spools almost to the line there. There's, in, in all the bait casters, there's usually a little red line on the outside and I usually feel it right to that red line or maybe not quite to that red line. And you know, what this does is, is by filling the line to its full, full extent, um, it gives you the true reel ratio. You can make your longest cast with it. You can take up more line and it's just a lot more efficient with that. Um, another thing that you wanna make sure is when um, you're spooling your line, a couple tips I'll give you to spool it here. Number one, make sure the line is coming off of your spool of line the same way it goes on the reel. Make, make sure it's not flipped upside down. You want it to go off the same way that it's going on your reel. And another thing you wanna do is you wanna put a lot of tension on it. Like when you're spooling it up, put that line between your fingers and really put a lot of tension on it. And another thing I like to do is sometimes I'll take like a, uh, like a towel and w get the towel soaking wet. And then I'll put that line in the wet towel as I'm spooling it. And sometimes when you put that wet line on there tight, that even further reduces the amount of backlashes you get. So that's just some simple tips on, on spooling up your line with that. Um, like I said, a lot of it is, is uh, just getting comfortable with what you wanna do. But I think if you use some of these three tips that I give here, it'll make it a lot less frustrating for you on the water. So hope that helps out guys and we'll talk to y'all later.